blessings to you, everyone, as you're joining on. Share this broadcast, invite your followers, and say, Lord, I receive the prophet's reward. Give me one second. Now, saints, I want you to, uh, I want you to uh, realize that the presence of Jesus in your life It causes you to start living from heaven while you're here in this natural realm. So your spirit man will start giving you more of direction and attentiveness to things that you have missed. Because sometimes the Lord Jesus, he'll speak to you. You can be in a grocery store. You can be somewhere just handling business and he'll come and start talking to you out of nowhere. He'll say something to you. And if you're not in the place of loving his presence, you'll miss it. A lot of times you can suffer things for years because you haven't developed what it means to love the presence of Jesus. So his presence can be right there waiting for you to love on him and you can leave him unattended. And so it'll cause things in your life to slow down because invoking his presence and provoking his presence are two different things. If you invoke the presence of God, it's like you're doing the things that he likes and so he wants to manifest. If you provoke his presence, it means that you're doing things that he doesn't like. So it causes him not to manifest. And the downside of the Lord not manifesting is then demons are going to manifest. And that's the scary thing. If the Lord cannot manifest, then demons are going to manifest. The Holy Spirit either is going to be the spirit that is exalted or there's going to be other spirits exalted. So you want to keep the spirit and the presence of King Jesus in the exaltation, in the magnifying realm so that you can be protected. Now, saints, what did the word of God say that? Moses told the father, I will not go if your presence do not go with me. Look, look at what he's saying. He's telling the Lord, I want your presence to go with me, which is so powerful because we see that Moses have an understanding that I'm not really supposed to love my assignment. I'm supposed to love the presence of God in my assignment. And another dimension of that also is that the presence of God is my assignment. You see that? So I, I, I'm not just going to love what I can do, but I'm going to love who I'm going, who I'm doing it for, who I'm doing it for. And loving the presence of Jesus will cause you to understand why you're doing something. Now, I want to say this understanding is so powerful because understanding is where your focus on King Jesus is so strong that you understand why you're in the season you're in. You and you understand why the Lord asked you to do that instruction. You understand why the Lord is telling you to be merciful to someone. You understand why the Lord is telling you to stay at that job. You understand why Things are happening in the world because of your focus on King Jesus in such a degree that it brings understanding. Now, I, I want to take you to uh, Proverbs chapter nine real quickly. But the presence of Jesus, you keep it the more you conversate with him. So you want to conversate with God a lot. If you find yourself silent for too long, you can invite evil spirits to talk to you, to talk with you. And it will be very hard for you to reject what they say because you're not in a conversation with the Lord. So it's, it's very important that every single day of your life, that you yourself create a conversation method 
with the father and you talk with him like he's your best friend. Every single day is important that you create a conversation method with the father that you talk with him and that you, you, you learn to stop rushing with life. Cause like, where are you going? If you don't have his presence manifested, where are you going? So don't be in such a rush. I need to get here. I need to get here. Because if you get there and he's not there, what did it profit you? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you, you want to transition from a season. But what is transitioning from that season going to do if you and the Lord are not flourishing in your conversation, in your friendship, in your togetherness, in your oneness. You see what I'm saying? The conversation is so important and, and you have to stay in a mode of thanking him. When you can't hear God, thank God. The thanks get the, the thanksgiving mouth will never go hungry. The thanksgiving mouth will never go hungry and the thanksgiving hand will never go empty. Proverbs chapter nine, verse 10 says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Now saints, the knowledge of the Holy One is the knowledge of Jesus. So it's telling you right here that once you get to know King Jesus, that you're going to have understanding. And once you have understanding, you're not going to be confused. Are you, are you seeing this? You're not going to be confused. You will know the reason, the motive the purpose, the intent of why things are going on around you. And saints, there's something so uh, gracious about understanding is that it causes you to calm down and relax. Do you know anxiety is rooted in confusion? When you get anxious, your mind is thinking, more than one thought at one time and you're lost. You're really lost. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do here? How am I going to get this? Oh, oh, I got to get this. Oh, oh, I got to fix this. How am I going to do this? I'm late. I'm late. I need to fix this out. What am I going to do? I'm getting older. I need, I need to help this. I need to get this right. I might I might lose. I might get hurt. I might get, get destroyed. All your thoughts are rooted in confusion. And so you're not at a good, you're not in a good place. But you kill that when you get to know King Jesus. Now, I, wanna, I want you to hear this. Even in the place of repentance, you're knowing Jesus. Because you couldn't repent unless you knew that there was something you was deciding to do that he did not approve of. So repentance is a position where you're knowing Jesus, but, but there's levels to knowing Jesus. So after you repent, you have to know Jesus more. Because that repentance carried a knowledge and that knowledge is limited. Wow. I, I want to say this again. When you ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, you don't know him in his fullness. You only know him in that realm that you're asking him to forgive you. But that's not him in his entirety. Wow. And so if you stay there, even what you asked him to forgive you for will reoccur. Because you don't have the strength that you needed for that very thing when it returns to tempt you to see if you good, to see if you focused. Are you seeing this? So Galatians 5, 1 says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ have made you free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ have made you free 
and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, saints, how did you get entangled again? Because the same thing came to you again. <laughs> and it caught you lacking. And, and saints, I, I, I want to say this to you, and this is so glorious to me. And the spirit of the Lord is saying this to me. There are schedules for power to flow in you. Your river, your river, you know, out of your belly shall flow rivers. Your river has a timing. So if you miss the timing of your river, you're left powerless when the powers of Satan come to tempt you or buffet you or oppose you. Because that river was going to deliver when the enemy came, when the darkness came. So if you miss the schedule, if you miss the time clock, if you miss the timing, when the occurrence takes place, you're going to be a slave instead of a master. Your born again privilege is to be a master. What did Romans say? Sin shall not have dominion over you. So that means that you have dominion over sin. <laughs> But why would sin have dominion over you if you're not letting the river flow in the timing that it's supposed to flow? And so you can be out of pocket. You can be out of socket. And when that happens, you're left powerless. And so while the Lord is telling Peter to watch and pray, there is an anointing scheduled during that watching and praying that's going to keep him from denying King Jesus. So he misses the watching and praying. And so he does not have strength. When that girl says, I saw you with Jesus. He can't stand up for Jesus. Because the power to stand up for Jesus was in the watching and praying. My God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you seeing this? Even God disciplined himself to yield to his timing. Because in Genesis, the spirit of God is hovering over the waters. There's darkness. God chooses to say, let there be light at an appointed time. He didn't say, let there be light when he first created heaven and earth. He waited for the timing and he spoke when he knew that his mood was right for manifestation. Saints, King Jesus goes to the fig tree and checks it because the fig tree is in the timing of God. But even the fig tree don't know it. Wow. The day before King Jesus came, the fig tree didn't know King Jesus was coming. Saints, why does God ask Adam, where art thou? Because Adam is out of the timing, the river. Even in Genesis, it says that I think it was four rivers. It talked about in Genesis how there was a river in Genesis. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter two, verse 10. It says, and a river went out of Eden. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't you love the voice of God? He'll lead you. See, I'm live right here. But he talking to me while I'm talking to you. Look what look what happened here. It says, and in verse 10, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Now, saints, I want to I want to give you this revelation that you have a river in your spirit that waters your garden, which is your mind. 
And then there's an exterior garden, which is your relationships. It can be marriage. It can be children. It can be your workplace. It can be uh, something that God assigned you to accomplish for someone else. You have an interior river. You have an exterior river. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Are you catching this? And the first river is interior because you got to get that inside right. And then there's an outside river. And, and, and saints, oh my gosh, here's what the spirit of the father just said to me in heaven. This is what he said. He said the interior river is love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, <laughs> your body. And he says, son, the exterior river is where you love your neighbor as yourself. He said, both of these rivers are the greatest commandments. Oh, my carebe, sorra, man, de re, de re, rapa, sorra, mon, corren, de re, de re, rapa, ca. There's an interior river that is love the Lord God. There's an exterior river, which is love your neighbor as yourself. And so, saints, watch this here. Abigail had this interior river inside of her called wisdom. And so when she meets David, the exterior river starts to flow. While Nabal said, I'm not going to feed you, David. She is trying to sneak food to David and his men. What's going on here? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. She functioned in her interior and exterior river. Nabal refused his river. Now, saints, the fact that King David went to Nabal, Nabal had a river, but Nabal refused the river. So, so saints, I want you to hear this. The Lord will come to you just like King David in this life, and he'll ask you to feed him. What does he mean feed him? That means that he wants your attention, your worship, your servanthood, your praise, your denial of flesh, your sanctification from wrong people, your studying of the word of God, your meditation of what he said to you, your desire for his wisdom. Your forgiveness of someone that did something wrong to you. Oh, Ramande, Rende, 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 Rapa, Soto, Rapa, Karama. And he's asking you for food, and you can either choose your neighbor and say no, or you can choose your Abigail and say yes. Ah, oh, Rabba, Karande, Karama. You can choose the neighbor that stops the river. Or you can choose the Abigail that surrenders and submits to the river. Saints, isn't it amazing that when Jonah chose not to go to Nineveh, that when they threw him out of that ship, the first thing that he hit was water. The first thing that he hit was his river. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. The first thing that the Lord let him touch after running was his river. Because the Lord said, hey, I told you to go to Nineveh. You refuse the river. So I'm going to pitch you in a river. To remind you of what you ran from. People of God, I want to say this to you apostolically. Don't run from your river. Because even if you don't like that river, you still going to have to go through a river anyway. But why choose the river of curses when you can choose the river of God's verses? <laughs> Jonah had a choice 
The Lord said, all right, you don't want this river to go to Nineveh? Well, I'm going to pitch you in this river. This well belly, this fish belly, whatever you said. And the Lord said, okay, you're going to be in a river whether you like it or not. Nabal refused the river to feed David, but he chose the river of a heart attack. The Lord struck him. Oh, Father, my Rabando Robo Correde. Father, I received the right river, the Holy Ghost River. Why did it say, Out of your belly shall flow rivers? Because your belly is where you digest food and it's where your food lingers after you have ate it. So, so the truth of the matter is the river of the Holy Spirit can't flow until you eat something. Man, I feel a deep anointing. <laughs> Because your belly is not where you eat. Your belly is where, 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 where you ate. Your belly is not where you eat. Your belly is where you ate. That means that you have already taken in something. So the fact that, that King Jesus didn't say, out of your mouth shall flow rivers. He said, out of your belly shall, f oh my God. So he's saying, you're going to have to do the work to eat the word. Eat what I told you to do. Eat what I instructed you to do. Then your river is going to come out of your belly off of your decision. Oh my caraba, caraba. Oh my caraba, caraba. Oh my caraba, caraba, caraba. 